not raised, and if Christ be not raised, then you're still in your sins. If there be no resurrection of the dead, we are of all men most miserable. And by the way, if you attack the resurrection, you are attacking the resurrected. You cannot attack the gospel without attacking Jesus Christ. That's, and Paul knew that firsthand because it was the Lord that said to him in Acts chapter 9 on the road to Damascus, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Me. Not why persecutest thou my people? Why persecutest thou my disciples or my churches or my church? He says, why persecutest thou me? You cannot attack the fundamentals of the gospel and you cannot attack the faith which was once delivered to the saints without attacking God, without attacking the Lord Jesus Christ. And Paul said, uh, yeah, uh, that makes me angry. And I've got a cause. I've got a, in fact, it's, it is our cause. The gospel is our cause. Does that make sense to you? It's my cause. Since April the 2nd of 1996, as a 21-year-old young man at my grandpa's funeral, when I said yes to the Lord Jesus Christ and was gloriously saved, it has been my cause. If you're saved, the gospel is your cause. And if someone attacks the gospel like they were in Acts chapter 15, like they were in the book of Galatians, O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you? Having begun in the Spirit, are you so soon made, are you made perfect by the flesh? Are you so soon turned aside to another gospel, which is not another? But there are some that seek to pervert you, that pervert the gospel of Christ. In Acts chapter 15, he said that, they said that you, you cannot be saved except you be circumcised. You cannot be saved. That's a direct, that's a dire, and Paul got upset. In fact, he contended with them. There was some contention. He was willing to fight over that. Not physically. He didn't punch nobody. But he did go up to the apostles in Jerusalem about that thing and got it all squared away. Whosoever is angry without his with his brother without a cause. The error here is related to that which Solomon warned against in Proverbs 3, 5, where he said, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Now, here's the exhortation. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. Why were they denying the resurrection? First, number one, they were denying the resurrection. It was an outright denial. These weren't just, you know, young Christians that had questions. That's fine. That's good. That's how we grow. It wasn't that. They said, there is no resurrection. There is no resurrection. When Paul called them on it, they said, huh, how are the dead raised and with what body do they come? And Paul said, you're a fool. You are a fool. It wasn't without a cause. So he wasn't in danger of hellfire. They were putting people in danger of hellfire. And Paul said, that's foolish. And if you're the one per perpetrating it, you're a fool. Perpetuating. If you're the one perpetuating it, you're a fool. It's that which the Lord condemns in Luke chapter number 12. You can turn there with me. Luke chapter number 12, when answering the rich man, remember Luke 12's rich man? He brought forth plentifully and didn't have... Room enough to store everything, remember that? Matthew, Mark, Luke, chapter 12, in your New Testament. And then find verse number 18. And he said, is that what you're saying? Luke 12, 18. And he said, this will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater and there will I bestow all my fruits and goods, and I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. What's missing here is any consultation with God. 
Is it wrong to tear down a barn and build a bigger one? Is that a sin against God? What's missing here is, is any consultation with God. He doesn't pray. He doesn't ask God what he, what he wants him to do. Rather, he leans on his own understanding and is guilty of using man's wisdom rather than godly wisdom. And we see God's response to him in verse 20 where he says this, But God said unto him, what? Thou fool. fool. Now God's calling him a fool. Why would God call somebody a fool? Because he's a fool. (laughs) Because he's being a fool. He's acting foolish. He's trusting in himself instead of God. And that, my friend, is a fool. If If I ever saw one in my life, that's a fool. That's what he is. By the way, I didn't say it. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then whose shall those things be which thou hast provided? Here was a man who spent his life living for himself, leaning on his own understanding, living under the guidance of man's wisdom, living as though there was no God. And God reveals to us how he views such a one when he says to him, Thou fool. And back in our text, that's exactly what Paul is doing It's exactly what Paul is doing as he says to those who are using their own understanding, their own reasoning, man's wisdom, he too says to such a one, what? Do you see it? What verse are you reading in? Verse 36, the opening two words, thou fool. This condemnation is not to discourage study of the word of God. We already said that. It's not to discourage Questions designed to aid in the understanding of Scripture. Clearly, we are exhorted time and time again to search the Scriptures, to study to show ourselves approved unto God, to be ready to give an answer to everyone that asketh us, and so on. The condemnation is not to discourage this, but to discourage relying on our own understanding, to discourage denying Bible truth because we don't understand it. The Bible truth was this, there is a resurrection. It had been declared numerous times by the time the Corinthian church was uh, established and by the time they got to this point where Paul was writing this letter to them, the, the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and the coming resurrection of those that are in Christ at His coming was a well-formed and well-founded and thoroughly published doctrine. And these Johnny-come-latelys are all of a sudden crying foul and saying, there is no resurrection. There is no resurrection. There is no resurrection. You see, that was the doctrine of the Sadducees. They don't believe in life after death. That's why they're sad, you see. I would be too. If I didn't believe in the resurrection, I'd convert to Sadduceeism. I'm happy, you see. Now, the happy you see is believe in life after death. They believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, and they believe that they they that believe in Jesus Christ will rise also. So they're happy, you see. And remember in our text, these whom Paul was dealing with weren't merely questioning. Rather, they were outright denying. Look back up to verse number 12. Verse number 12, what does it say? Now, if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that, say these words with me, there is no resurrection of the dead. That's what they were saying. What were they saying? They weren't saying, huh, I wonder how the resurrection works. Boy, that's a mystery. Boy, isn't God amazing that he's going to take bodies that have been destroyed, burned, Chopped up. I mean, they saw it all. They saw bodies crucified. They saw people's heads chopped off. Uh, they saw people sawn and they put them in logs and saw them in half. They would put them in the Colosseum with wild beasts and they'd rip them apart and eat them. How, isn't God amazing that He's going to be able to take? And, and then they had seen them burned at the stake, reduced to mere ash. Isn't God amazing? Can you imagine the awesome power of God that he is going to be able to raise even them from the dead? That's not what they were saying. 
They were saying, how's he going to do that? What body are they going to come with? There is no resurrection. And Paul said, you're a fool. Everybody says, says that, you're a fool. The Holy Ghost through Paul was revealing to us here at least part of the reason for this denial was because they didn't understand how it could happen. The questions they asked reveal this. How are the dead raised up and with what body do they come? And so the Holy Ghost moves Paul to use physical manifestations to aid in their understanding of the spiritual truth of the resurrection. And we're going to have to save those until next week what they are. But he's going, it's already late. But he's going to use the analogy of grain. And he's going to use the analogy of terrestrial bodies and bodies celestial. And he's going to use those analogies, those things that are physical, those things that are observable, those things that are repeatable, those things that we can experiment with and understand about. And he's going to use that to demonstrate the spiritual truth of the resurrection of the body from the dead. And it's rather amazing. All right. Heavenly Father, we're so grateful for the time together tonight. And we pray your blessing on our study, on our devotion, on the message. And Lord, I pray these truths would impact our lives. Oh God, that you'd stir in our hearts, stir in our spirits. Help us to be more like Jesus. Conform us, Holy Spirit to the image of the Lord Jesus Christ. Help us to live with a fervor and a passion for God and a love for God. In Jesus' name, amen. Good evening. I'll be reading a missionary letter from Brother, Ke from Brother Kevin Murdoch. Divine appointment number one. I met Alan after doing open air preaching at New, New Mexico State University. He had some questions about how to overcome sinful habits in his life. In short, I explained that until he was born again, his efforts to defeat those habits would be in vain. Praise the Lord. I was given the time to share the gospel with Alan, and he said there was nothing keeping him from receiving Christ as his Savior. Alan and I talked for about two hours to ensure he understood how the gospel of Christ applied to him. Alan's prayer to the Lord was so precious. Rejoice that his soul was truly born again in Jesus Christ. Divine appointment number two. A young man who leads a Christian student group at New Mexico State and I coincidentally connected one day. Before I preached on another occasion, we talked. He spoke of a man who had memorized the entire book of Mark and preached it at a college where, over time, drew hundreds of people. This little chat was no accident. It was God confirming in my heart to preach scriptures I've memorized to college and cities around America. Please pray for me about this needful ministry. Divine appointment number three. I recently encountered Gregory, the, the, the Satanist, at an abortion clinic. He, was bl he, he arrived blaring the vilest music you can imagine. He gives hours of his time to support abortions in Albuquerque. The day I saw him, he drowned out my preaching, but the Lord miraculous, miraculously opened a door to share the gospel with him. It was amazing. We had a tremendous conversation, and God's law, the certainty of hell, and true salvation in Christ was proclaimed. As an added blessing, Gregory turned off his music while we talked. This young man and his fiancée need our prayers right now, and there's no closing, so that's the end of it. Pray for those with Brother Kevin, the young man that prayed and asked the Lord to save him, and then also uh, the others that he mentioned there. <clears throat> and then remember that a week and a half from today on Sunday, May 29th, is the teen takeover service, and I'm really looking forward to it. They've been practicing, they've been uh, you know, rehearsing, whatever you want to call it, but preparing. You know, preparation goes into it. Singers practice, preachers pray, prepare, 
and uh, they're taking this very, very seriously. And, um, and it's them serving the Lord. That's what it is, and it's precious. It's precious. I'm, I'm thankful for young people that have a heart to serve God. They'd not rather be out playing or, you know, running the streets and, and all that kind of stuff. They have a, a real desire to serve God. And it's our responsibility as a church and as parents and as a family to encourage that and to allow that to flourish and to grow and to guide that and cultivate that, to train them up in the way that they should go. That's our responsibility. Yes, just the afternoon service. Great question. So that will just be the afternoon service. And, uh, and then we'll go from there. There's been talk about it happening again, possibly on a semi-regular basis. And uh, Brother Howard is doing a great job working with them and coordinating that. Also on June 5th, there is a men's meeting, our an annual missions meeting. And so that's on June 5th, uh, right after the morning service. And then on August the 6th, Brother Justin and Miss Jenny are getting married at 11 a.m., and so they ask that you please RSVP for that. And then Brother Greg is leading a missions trip to New Orleans to Brother Terry there in Terrytown at the homeless, uh, the homeless ministry that Brother Terry has going on there. That's Friday, August the 26th, through Sunday, August the 28th. So if you're interested in going to that, Brother Greg has asked that you sign up on sign-up sheets right here on the front table, on the communion table, and then you can talk with him if you have questions, uh, what all will happen, and things like that, and Brother Greg will be able to give you the information that you need on that, answer your questions. And we need to have you sign up by the end of this month, preferably, isn't that right, Brother Greg? because he's got to do, uh, he's got to get with hotels, make sure that there are going to be rooms available, and then also uh, we'll be likely renting a van, the church will, uh, to take the team down, and we'll need to, you know, sometimes rentals can be hard to get with all that's going on in our economy right now, and back up and stuff like that, so we want that early enough to where we can begin to plan that and try to have everything in place in plenty of time. So if you're interested in going on the missions trip to New Orleans, Please see Brother Greg and sign up down here. All right. And with that, we will take prayer requests. Sister Sheila. Okay. So they have their camper for sale. So let's pray together that that will sell.
salvation is uncertain. So pray for his salvation and then pray for this. They said he's got about a 50% chance of making it. Hmm. Okay. Sister Patty. young man before. He's 18 years old. His name's William and he has cancer of the leg. Next week they're going to be doing surgery on his leg. And he's been going through chemo. So just like praying for healing of the cancer and then his leg will work again. They were going to amputate but they decided to do something else and I don't know exactly what it is. Okay. So an 18 year old named William has cancer in his leg and they're doing chemo. They had talked about possibly amputating his leg, so pray that the chemo works, that the cancer's cleared up, that the leg can be saved. <coughs> okay, so her great nephew, uh, Bear, has a wound that's not healing. And it's very painful. Okay. Bethy. Bethy, four unspokens. <coughs> Sister Lisa. Sister Fina. and for prayer. Good. Pray, praise the Lord. Great testimony. Okay, so Joseph Monty is her nephew, and he has diabetes and is in the hospital now. Uh, just after the insulin, maybe he's doing some better? Or? Uh, he's just getting worse and worse. So he'll get out, but they have to get it down. So yeah. that's a lot. Okay, so we'll pray for Joseph Monty. Noah, did you have your hand up? One unspoken for Noah. <clears throat> Mark. You have names? Hannah and Austin are fathers dead. Hannah and Austin both have cancer. Say again. They're, both of their fathers have cancer. Okay, so Hannah and Austin's fathers have cancer. So 
So we'll pray for them. Brother Eddie. That was run over. Uh, he's getting out of the hospital and been transferred to a rehab uh, place to, to continue his uh, rehab. Okay, remind us of the name again. Manuel. Manuel. Gonzalez. So this name, you got that notification when they sent it out originally. Manuel Gonzalez. At first, it was reported he was in a car accident, and then later it was determined that he was actually run over by a car and pretty banged up. And so, he's still in the hospital now. No, he's getting. He was supposed to get out this afternoon and be in transport to a rehab. To a rehab. So, uh, out of the so hospital so today. And family members and friends and to unspoken. So unsafe family members and friends and then Sister Anna also has two unspokens. Sister Cheryl, two unspokens. Sister Cheryl Sowell, two unspokens. And then also continue to pray for Donna Robinson. Spokens for Isaac. Uh, pray for Bruce. He's in Wyoming working. Uh, Brother Ron, he and Brother Ron went up together, and Brother Ron made it back <coughs> last evening. And Bruce is up there working hard with men. Yeah, it's true. It is true. And they're building pole barns and corrals and spelled corral, but they pronounce it corral. And then, uh, yeah, all kinds of work up there going on. Brother Ron was out helping them herd cattle. How many head? About 150 head of cattle. And, uh, one pasture to another. Amen. Yeah. Good times. And then Isaac will be going up. So pray for Bruce as he works up there this summer. He'll be there for three months working. He's been doing that for the summer since he was 14, with the exception of last summer, because he was doing school at Lone Star. But, yeah, he's uh, up there. He learns a lot up there, works hard, makes a lot of money. And then he's going to come back home, and in the fall he's got intro to pipe and advanced pipe, and then he's done with his welding certificate. And then it's time to be a man. <clears throat> so, so pray for him. He'll be 20 this year. Growing up. And then Isaac will be leaving on the 29th. He and Brother Ron will be, Brother Ron will be delivering another one up there. And Isaac will be up there working for two and a half months and come back in August as well when we come back from family vacation up there. So pray for Bruce up there. Someone else? Father, Caesar is his name, and he has been in the hospital with a heart, serious heart. 
heart issue, and he's recovering, but he needs more blood. Okay, so Caesar. For Caesar. Caesar's in the hospital still. I'm not positive. Do you remember, Mary? Is Caesar still in the hospital? Yes. Yes. Okay, so Caesar's still in the hospital. Um, that's a prayer request of Sister Sophia. Heart issues in the hospital. Daniel, welcome back. Land of the free, home of free. Wisdom and direction with regarding his um, potential job change. He just got back from a trip to Canada, and that was with his current job. And then he's still in the running for two jobs, one here, one not here, and then he's applied for two other jobs, both of which would likely keep him here. So let's pray for those and pray for him. Wisdom, direction, open doors, opportunity, prosperity blessings. Brother Jason? Yep. Yet, I suspect I probably won't hear anything maybe until June, first week of June. Um, so yeah, I'm still praying for that I can be able to have Sundays off, maybe even Wednesday evenings if the Lord wills it. Um, and if not with this current job, open to other opportunities as well. I remember when I was little, my grandmother used to tell me all that Sundays don't get worse before it gets better. I, th I thought that didn't make any sense. But, uh, but so we've been praying for Brother Jason and Brother Lewis to be able to come to church every time. Brother Lewis isn't here tonight because he has to work on Wednesdays. He's 12 to 8. And then Brother Jason's here on Wednesday, but he's not able to come on Sunday because of work. And so we began to pray that God would fix their schedules so that they'd both be able to be here. And then now they've informed Brother Lewis, okay, now you got to work Saturdays too. Worse before better, but we're trusting God. And so these, both of these men would like to be in God's house when the doors are open. They participate. They're here. Brother Jason comes and spends all day on Wednesday now, huh? All day on Wednesday, been here since this morning, and, uh, and it's a blessing. And then Brother Lewis likes to be here as well. And, uh, and one unspoken for Brother Jason as well. So if I, if y'all notice that I've grown, that I grow my hair out, I haven't yet. But if I, if it starts getting real long, it's because Brother Lewis is so, working so much, he can't come cut my hair. All right, I'm not going liberal. I'm not contemporary. Y'all know better than that. All right? It's just my, my hairstylist <laughs> is working so much. So, you know? So, yep. Brother Don said he got a weed eater back there. 
<laughs> yeah, amen. All right. Any other prayer requests? It's okay to have fun in church. It's not too much. All right. So if that's it, then we'll go ahead and pray over these and thank the Lord. You got another one? things that they go over that's on Monday re regarding uh, the heart valve replacement and then it looks like it could potentially be done within two weeks of that meeting and of course anytime they're doing stuff like that there is risk involved um, they do them they did four today they got eight coming up so it's something that they do pretty regularly nevertheless and did indicate that there is substantial risk involved, potential substantial risk involved. So let's pray that um, God's will be done, that he'd be able to get this heart valve replaced and that it would give him some, some help and some relief. Anybody else? All right, if that's it, we'll go ahead and pray over these. Did you write them down? Okay, so I'm gonna, okay, so. If you two would start, you start us off, and then Joshua, and just pray, like try to play, pray in order, and just pray for so many of them, and then when you stop, Joshua pick up there, and then, uh, and then Brother Greg will pick up where Joshua leads off, leaves off, and then I will close this out. All right. Save family, family members, and friends. I'm sure everyone here has at least someone they know that isn't saved that they would love to be saved, Lord. And um, we pray for Bruce and Bruce, who are currently in Wyoming, and Isaac leaving for Wyoming on the 29th. We pray that you'll bless the work that they do there. And we pray this all in your son's name. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much uh, once again for the word preach tonight, Lord, and Lord, we uh, thank you for the truth and the resurrection of the dead. Lord, we thank you that we are not men most visible, that we do have the hope of the resurrection. Lord, we uh, can take your word by faith and, and know that that day is coming. Lord, uh, I do pray that you would help us 
not to lean upon our own understanding, but instead to simply trust in you and in your word. Lord, that we would seek your will uh, in every decision that we have to make in our lives, Lord, that we would not just do whatever seems best to us, but that instead we would seek your face and your will, what you would have us to do. Lord, we want to pray for our missionary, Brother Kevin uh, Murdoch, and we thank you for his ministry. And uh, Lord, we thank you that you saved Alan, as uh, Brother Murdoch shared the gospel with him. And Lord, we thank you that he called upon you for salvation. Lord, we just pray to bless him and, and help him to, to grow as a, as a newborn Christian. And Lord, we also want to pray for Brother Murdoch's new preaching ministry that he's thinking about starting, Lord. Lord, I just pray that you will guide him and give him direction in what you have him to do. Lord, we also want to pray for that Satanist, uh, Gregory, that was uh, blaring the loud music and disrupting the preaching. Lord, uh, just pray that you will soften his heart, show him uh, his great wickedness and his need for repentance. Lord, his need to call upon you for salvation. Lord, we pray you be merciful to him. Be gracious to him and you'd save his soul. Yeah. Lord, we also want to pray for the upcoming teen takeover service. Lord, we pray to bless the teens as they prepare, continue to guide them and help them uh, and, and bless that service, Lord. Just pray you'll have your way. Lord, we also want to pray for the upcoming missions meeting. Lord, that you'll uh, help prepare our hearts for what you would have us to do as a church for missions. Lord, we do want to pray a blessing for Brother Justin and Miss Jenny and their marriage. Lord, we're very excited and looking forward to their wedding. Lord, we just pray to a blessing. Everything will go smoothly. Uh, Lord, uh, weddings can be a very stressful time. But things don't always go as we would like. So Lord, we just ask your hand and blessing upon it. Uh, that it would be a joyous time. And uh, Lord, we do pray for the upcoming trip to New Orleans, Lord. We just pray that you'll meet the need and all the supplies that we're going to need for that trip to come in according to your will, Lord. And, and those of us that you would have us to go on the trip, Lord, just pray that you make that clear and help us to, to be able to get there and to uh, preach the gospel to the homeless there and to those of you there and to be an encouragement to Brother Terry. Lord, we pray for the Morris family. Their campers for sale, Lord, and just pray that you would uh, bless the sale of the camper. Lord, we do want to pray for these various unspoken prayer requests, Lord, for Bethany's four unspoken requests, Miss Lisa's unspoken, Lord, for Noah's unspoken prayer request, for Miss Anna's two unspoken prayer requests, Miss Cheryl's two, Lord, for Isaac's three unspoken. For my two unspokens, for Joshua's four unspokens, for my brother Jason's unspoken. Lord, you know each of these needs intimately, Lord. You knew about these needs before they even came up. Lord, just pray that you would meet the needs according to your wisdom, according to your, your grace, Lord, and, and your goodness to us, Lord. And Lord, I pray that you would help us to, to recognize and, and appreciate you what you're going to do in each one of these needs. Lord, we also want to pray for uh, Hannah and Austin, whose fathers had cancer, Lord. Lord, we just pray that your will be done in their lives, Lord, if you'd be willing that you would heal their bodies, Lord, that you'd be glorified, that you'd get the glory to yourself for healing them, or that it would be to the furtherance of the gospel. Lord, we also pray for Manuel Gonzalez, Lord, has been run over. Lord, we thank you that he's out of the hospital and he's now in rehab. And Lord, just he's, he's got a ways to go. And so, Lord, we just pray that you would bless him and help him as he recovers from that horrible accident. Lord, we do want to pray for our unsaved family and friends. I especially think of my own cousin Brent, my uncle Brent. Randy, the pastor's uncle Randy. Lord, I just pray that you would work in their lives and you would humble them and show them their need for salvation. That 
you would grant them repentance to the knowledge of the truth, and that you'd save their souls. And we thank you for all that you do for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Lord, we're so grateful for your goodness to us. Thank you that you hear and answer prayer, that you encourage us to pray, you invite us to pray, you command us to pray. You said, call unto me, and I will answer thee. Show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. You said, Ask, and ye shall receive. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. And so, Lord, it's because of this, the invitation, the command, the exhortation, that we call, that we ask, that we seek, that we knock, believing, Lord, your word. We pray tonight for Teakin Johnson. Uh, that He's a young man. He's had heart surgery in the past, a heart attack, and now he's in the hospital. They're giving him uh, about a 50% chance of making it. He's in a coma. And, Lord, his salvation is uncertain. I just pray, God, for mainly for his soul. He leaves this world without Jesus, Lord, as eternity will be said. And I pray, God, that you would raise him up off of that bed, that you would give him an opportunity again to call on the name of the Lord Jesus to be saved and to serve you and to live for you and to be a testimony of the grace and the mercy of God. I pray for Donna Robinson tonight as she continues to have treatments for the 20% of the brain tumor that is still in there they were unable to take out. Lord, I pray that the treatments would prove effective and that she would praise your holy name and that uh, people would be drawn to Jesus because of it. Uh, we pray for uh, Caesar, who is in the hospital with his heart situation, and Sister Sophie had shared that prayer request, and we pray, God, for him, that your will would be accomplished in that. Pray for the Brother Daniel that you would give him wisdom, Lord, as you promised to do in direction, that you would open doors for him, make clear uh, what you would have him do job-wise. Uh, Lord, he's got a couple of opportunities and, may, and potentially a couple more now. And, Lord, you know that is our desire, and many a voice that here at Candlestick, and that's not by coincidence that he be here. Him and I have served you together now for 24 years, uh, both here and in China, and then back here again. And, uh, Lord, we're kind of joined at the hip with that. And you've allowed us to go through so many different things together and experiences together in serving the Lord Jesus Christ and what a joy it's been. And so, Lord, we just pray that you would provide for him in a way that is pleasing to you, that brings glory to you and meets his needs and the needs of his family. We pray for the work schedules of Brother Jason and Brother Lewis, Lord, as they uh, are each one missing some church because of work and they have such a desire to be here. And, Lord, we know that you are able... We know that seniority plays a role in the amount of business and various schedules and work times, and but, Lord, you're able, and so we just trust you and we place it at your feet. And, Lord, we're not attempting to manipulate situations, but simply lay it at the feet of Jesus and let God do what God does. I pray for Brother Don as he meets with the surgeon on Monday and uh, will potentially have that risky heart valve replacement within the next two weeks or so. I pray, Lord, that he would be able to have it done that you would guide the hands of the surgeons and those that assist him. And, Lord, that your will would be accomplished, that this would provide better blood flow and more energy, more stamina uh, for Brother Don as he seeks to serve you, Lord, with all that he has. We thank you tonight for being good to us. We thank you for the precious word of God, the preaching, the teaching of it. Thank you for the ability to sing praises to your name, in unison, and our voices be heard in heaven's courts as we lift praise to your worthy name. Thank you for Christian fellowship. Thank you for the assembly of the saints. Thank you for church. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, church.